Let's consider the following mathematical expression. 3 plus 4 times 7. When I give this problem to students, sometimes I have students that start and look at this problem and say 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 times 7 gives me an answer of 49. Well, I have other students that look at this problem and do the multiplication first. 28 times, or 4 times 7 is 28, plus 3 is 31. This is really bad news. We should not be able to have the same mathematical expression and come up with two different possible answers. Everyone should always get the same solution. So, mathematicians, quite a long time ago, came up with a specific process for us called the order of operations. This gives us a specific checklist and order that we should do all of our mathematical operations in when we're trying to get a solution or an answer to a problem. When we're trying to do the oper order of operations, the first thing that we always need to look for is if there are any parentheses in the problem. If there are, anything in the parentheses has to be done first. Sometimes you'll find there's more than one set of parentheses parentheses in a problem, you always want to start with the inside most parentheses first and then work your way out. Once you've taken care of all of the parentheses in a problem, the next thing that you want to do is concentrate on any exponents that are in the problem and take care of those next. Remember exponents are where you have a number as a base and then a power above it. So something like 2 to the third power would be an example. And recall that exponents are a way to do repeated multiplication. Two to the third power means two times two times two, which would be eight. So if there's parentheses, do those first. If there's exponents in the problem, do those next. Notice in our example here of three plus four times seven, there aren't parentheses and there aren't exponents. So we just keep working our way down the checklist. The next thing that you want to check for is multiplication and division. Sometimes there's going to be more than one of these in a problem. If there are, you want to do them left to right. Multiplication and division have equal priority, so you're just doing the first multiplication or division that you see as you work from left to right. Then, once you've taken care of all of the multiplications and divisions in a problem, the last thing you want to do is any additions and subtractions in the problem. Again, addition and subtraction have equal priority. What we want to do when we're deciding the order to do them in, we're going to do them from left to right, either addition or subtraction, whatever comes first as we look from left to right in the problem. So if we keep this in mind as our order of operations, Let's go through our checklist here with our example and decide which of our students were correct. If we want, the, we decided that in 3 plus 4 times 7, there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, but there is a multiplication or a division. When we come through here, notice that we have 4 times 7 is a multiplication. So the correct process is to do the multiplication first. 4 times 7 is 28. And then we can do 3 plus the 28 to come up with the correct final solution of 31. So that gives us kind of the general approach that we want to follow as we're trying to simplify different expressions. Let's look at a more complicated expression and go through our checklist and follow the order of operations. Let's suppose that we have something like this, 30 divided by 5 plus 10 times 3 minus 2 inside parentheses. Again, what we want to do is go through our order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. The first thing we check for is parentheses. We do, in fact, have a set of parentheses here, so those are going to be the very first thing that we're going to look at and do. Inside the parentheses, we have 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, and then we just want to copy everything else exactly the same down. The only difference is that instead of 3 minus 2, we've replaced that with a 1 in the problem. All right. Um, so we've taken care of all of the parentheses in this problem. 
The next thing that we want to look at is exponents. Exponents are those little powers up at the top. Notice we do not have any exponents in this problem. The next thing that we want to do in this problem is do any multiplications or divisions that we see working from left to right. Well, I, as I look from left to right, the first multiplication uh, or the first multiplication or division I see is actually this division here. So the first thing that we want to do is do 30 divided by 5. In this case, 30 divided by 5 is 6. And then we copy everything else down as we still have it. We're still not done with multiplication and division yet. We look for, if we notice that here we have 10 times 1. Remember, if you have a number and parentheses next to each other like this, it means that we're going to multiply. We can't, uh, and so we can do that 10 times 1 that's there next. 10 times 1 is 10 still. Bring everything else down. 6 plus the 10 gives me my final solution of 16. As you're doing your homework, please show your work in some manner like this. Just do one operation at a time as you simplify and work your way down through the different parts of the problem. Um, okay, let's take a look at another example. 9 plus 5 to the third power minus 4 plus 9 plus 3. Okay, as we go through our checklist here, um, let's see what we get. The first thing we want to do is look at parentheses. Notice that here we have brackets as well as parentheses. We always want to start at the inside most set first. So in this case, the inside most set of values inside the parentheses is 9 plus 3. So we're going to do that first. Copy everything else down. 9 plus 5 to the third minus 4. Put in our brackets. 4 plus, but instead of 9 plus 3, we can go ahead and do that and get 12. So we've taken care of our innermost set of parentheses. We're still not done with parentheses yet, so we're not ready to move on to the next step yet. We still can do the 4 plus 12 that's in parentheses here. Again, copy everything down that we have so far. 9 plus 5 to the third minus 4 times 4 plus 12 is 16. So we can write that value next as we go through our problem. All right, now we've simplified everything in all of the parentheses, right? Right now all we've got is 16 in there, can't do anything with that. So the next thing we're going to move on to is exponents. We do have exponents in this particular problem. We have 5 to the third power, so we're going to do that next. Remember that 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5, and when we do that we get 125. So here we have 9 plus 125 minus... 4 times 16. All right, now that we've taken care of our exponents, the next thing that we need to do is work on our multiplications or divisions. Here, we have 9 plus 125 minus 4 times 16. So the 4 times 16 is the next piece of information that we need to do. If we multiply 4 times 16, we get 64. So copying everything else down along the way, we have 9 plus 125 minus 64 as we're continuing to simplify our expression. Now, all of our multiplications and divisions are done. All we're left with is additions and subtractions, and we want to perform those from left to right, whatever comes first. In this case, I do have an addition first. I'm going to add 9 plus 125, and that's going to give me 134, and then I want to subtract 64 from that. My last step then is going to be do, to do 134 minus 64, and that gives me 70 as a final solution to this simplified expression as we go through. If you're worried about or have trouble remembering this particular order of operations, there's a real common little silly saying that you can use to help you remember, and that is, please excuse My dear Aunt Sally. This helps you to remember the different order of things that you need to do in. Please has a P to remind you to do exponents first. Excuse has an E to remind you to do, or sorry, parentheses first. E for excuse is exponents next. 
Then we have my dear. It's important to think of my dear as its own combination. Multiplication and division have equal priority and are done in order from left to right. Aunt Sally reminds you that the last things that we want to work on are our additions and subtractions. Again, addition and subtraction have the same level of priority. We need to do them from left to right in the order that they appear in the problem.